In this video, I'm going to answer the question, do the t-test and ANOVA really assume normality? The inspiration for this presentation is that I often see people go about addressing this issue in a very wrong way, and I see people running around like chickens with their heads cut off, uh, trying to deal with non-normality when they want to do something like a t-test in ANOVA. And I hope by the end of this, you'll have a much clearer picture about how you should go about uh, evaluating normality in the context of doing statistics like the t-test in ANOVA. So first off, what does normality mean? It means that the dependent variable scores are normally distributed. And the t-test and ANOVA in the textbook, in textbooks and in uh, various papers, are often stated to assume normality. And although that may be strictly true uh, when the t tests were formulated, uh, that's something that's really an empirical question that people have tried to answer over the years. And here's a uh, theoretical normal distribution. So ideally, our distributions might look like this, uh, but in practice they often do not. So testing whether a distribution of scores are normal uh, is not very difficult to do, and there are a number of tests to do so. And common ones include the z-test, which is skew divided by standard error of skew, or kurtosis divided by standard error of kurtosis. And if the z value associated with this ratio is equal, equal to or greater than 1.96, then people will conclude that the distribution is non-normal. I see this test used very often uh, in the context of evaluating a distribution for normality when people simply want to do a t-test or an ANOVA. And as I'll show, this is not a good test to use. People also use the uh, kolmogorov smirnov test, which is a little more sophisticated, it combines both skew and kurtosis at the same time, and the Shapiro-Wilk test, which is similar to uh, the kolmogorov smirnov but not as conservative. An important distinction to make in the context of evaluating uh, normal distributions is that that these z-tests and Shapiro-Wilk type tests are not wrong or inaccurate. Uh, there is a difference to testing a hypothesis that a distribution is normal. Sometimes you theoretically want to test that hypothesis. There might be a, a clinical uh, group of people that you're interested in in terms of whether the, their distribution follows a normal distribution and you would use tests like those described on the preceding slide. But when you're trying to determine whether a distribution is excessively non-normal for the purposes of conducting a parametric statistic, like a t-test or ANOVA, you should not use those tests that I just described on the preceding slide. There's a difference between testing it for a hypothesis that you have versus evaluating whether the data are sufficiently normal for conducting a t-test and ANOVA. So here's what uh, a simulated data set looks like. This is a sample size of 5,000. And I simulated it to be normal, and of course it didn't come out to be perfectly normal. Uh, I got a skewness of 0 0.03, and a standard error of skewness of 0 0.03, and a kurtosis of negative 0 0.09, and a standard error of kurtosis of 0 0.07. So if I do the Z tests that people often do, I get a Z for the skew equal to 1.0, and I get a kurtosis value equal to negative 1.29. And so because both of these z-values are less than the absolute value of 1.96, we would not reject the null hypothesis that these distributions, that this distribution is normal. And you can also do the kolmogorov smirnov test and the Shapiro-Wilk, and based on the, this distribution of scores, haven't rejected the null hypothesis of a normal distribution, and haven't rejected it uh, for the Shapiro-Wilk either. So based on all uh, four tests, this distribution would be considered normal, looks normal too. So what if you get a distribution like this though, and this is much more like what you would get in nature, and possibly even more extremely non-normal, but is this distribution normal? Well we could test it. Let's say I was interested in doing a t-test on this group uh, with another group, and I would find that skew in this case is equal to 0.34 and kurtosis negative 0.18. And when I do a Z test on this, I find that the Z is actually statistically significant. Uh, so it's suggesting that there's a statistically significant amount of skew associated with this distribution, because the Z value is equal to 11.33. 
Kurtosis is also statistically significant at negative 